Hey, I'm Slopcore, and over the past few years, Doom Eternal and Doom 2016 have become a couple of my favorite games of all time. Oh, I'm at one health. Wait, do I still have immunity? Nope. <laughs> okay. So much so that I have felt compelled to go back and play the original Doom, Doom 2, and Doom 64, and very much enjoyed them as well. And while all of these games each have their own little nuances, especially when comparing the 30-year-old titles to the two released recently, and even still between those very two, they seem to all have this familiarity in the fast-paced movement, the joy of demon slaying, the almost puzzling level design laden with secrets, and a family of characters who, despite their mostly hideous features and often violent tendencies, we've grown to love for how they've changed over the years. But there was one title I simply ignored. One which a lot of, but not all, fans of the franchise have seemingly written off as the bastard of the family due to its drastic deviation from the formula for which the rest have been known by. And indeed, if you don't know any of these games, I could show you this. And then, subsequently looking at this, it might be easy to heed the warning that this one sucks. It's not even Doom. Don't even bother. And I did heed those warnings, perhaps against my own better judgment. But even still, in the back of my mind I wondered, what is it like? What really is Doom 3? And why are people's opinions of it so polarized? Knowing nothing about it, I almost already concluded that I hated it, but there was always a shadow of a doubt, which I could not escape. If I was really going to hate it, I wanted to really know why I hated it. So, with my expectations at an absolute zero, I picked up Doom 3 BFG Edition for a few bucks off Steam, and with nothing to lose except my time, which probably doesn't I mean have much value anyway, I decided to give it a go. And as soon as the game began, I noticed more inspiration taken from Halo Combat Evolved than any of the previous installments, because instead of this... I got this. The Can't Union play on Nightmare. This corporation is the largest corporate entity in existence. Originally focused on weapon and defense contact. With U07063 passing through 38,000. Roger, Dark Star descended. We've got you, Dark Star. You are set for lockdown. Welcome back. What is this? Okay. <laughs> oh. Shit. Oh boy, you gotta watch the whole cutscene again, don't- Oh no. <laughs> what? <laughs> The game definitely takes its time to set up some much-needed exposition. Not a lot to do around here. Oh my. Somebody has been using this bathroom for nefarious purposes. Oh no. Let's get out of here. I bet it was that- I bet it was that guy that just walked out. Oh no, that's- dude. Not a lot to do around here. What the fuck, man? The first five to ten minutes is mostly atmosphere building, since horror is the main thematic element, and I will say, if you're the type of person who decides in the first ten minutes whether to see a game through, nothing wrong with that, you wouldn't be blamed for thinking that this isn't the Doom game you thought you were getting into. And I'll be honest, I had my reservations, but I was determined to see this through till the end, and without spoiling anything, 
I ended up uh, mostly glad that I did. What is going on? What the hell is that? Oh, Jesus Christ. What is he doing? Oh. <laughs> Hit him with the spin jump. We're fighting Mario. What the fuck was that? <laughs> now, it takes a lot for me to be scared. Which, when these guys exist. Okay. Oh! <laughs> But any real fears that I had, both in-game and about the game, were quelled by the incipience of something I didn't even know had been missing from my childhood days growing up under the light of towering, shoddy arcade cabinets, and that is Super Turbo Turkey Puncher 3. Super Turbo Turkey Puncher 3. <laughs> Yo. Yo. At what point do we do do we assume that nothing else happens here? At what point? <laughs> oh, okay. There's an achievement. Okay, well, yeah, perfect. All right. New high score. You set a new high score in Super Turbo Turkey Puncher 3. Your parents can rest easier knowing they have raised another shining example of humanity. <laughs> Due to the incredible amount of time you wasted punching poor defenseless turkeys, your vacation time has been docked two days. <laughs> okay. Damn, I needed that vacation. Yet, through the light of this spectacular example of Arcadian evolution, still slithered shadows of my doubts validated. Let me do a radio test. <laughs> Why does the pistol sound like a wet sponge? <laughs> And I will be completely honest, the beginning of this game does not really do itself or the rest of it any favors. The only solace to be found between the stagnance of dialogue and walking sequences is the player's freedom in dealing with the NPCs with the same level of mercy given to our patients by so many developers throughout the history of gaming. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> Maybe. I'm not sure you want to find him. You see, uh, never mind. Why? Why don't I want to find him? Huh? A quick walk outside to the center's airlock. Hey, don't sweat. Don't tell me what to do. Mark Ryan. The demons are surprisingly easy to kill in this game. They also look strangely humanoid. Despite taking longer to get off the ground than my 200 pound dog after a nap, once this game gets going, it does actually start to feel more like Doom. You pick up the shotgun, an assault rifle, and maybe 45 minutes in, it's pretty easy to get lost going through the levels and gunning down demons in the same way you might in one of the classics. Unfortunately, after not too long, you're going to start to notice a couple trends that might start to frustrate you, and if they don't quite yet, they may indeed, after around five to six hours of the same exact things over and over again. And these trends are, number one, spawning enemies behind you, and number two, having an enemy leap at you immediately upon opening a door or turning a corner. 
Now, let me just say, I think these two design elements are helpful for a horror shooter in order to keep the player on their toes, keep them anxious, and worried about what might be over their shoulder. However, much like a movie throwing a jump scare at you every 60 seconds, it gets old real fast, and Doom 3 does these things so frequently that by 20% of the way through the game, the player will likely be able to predict exactly when it will happen, and that is all the time. Oh god. How did you end- how, where did you fucking come from? Dude, they just always are behind you. And yet, despite the often egregiously monotonous placement of enemies, the level design which they populate is usually pretty sweet. Much like its predecessors, you will be searching for keycards and security clearance within an intersecting and branching layout full of secrets and satisfying shortcuts. And for those who care, there's even plenty of lore and little puzzles involving locked chests with codes hidden in the emails or recordings found within the world. Often you must use interactable screens which have dynamic buttons on them, and for 2004 this was actually pretty cool. But that being said, I think one major flaw of the design is that the environment of the first level, basically to the last level, has almost zero aesthetic deviation or progression to it. Here's a clip from the beginning of the game, and here is a clip near the end of the game. You could convince me that these are the same exact level. Besides lighting differences, the only exception is the one level in which you actually go to hell, and that was my favorite level in the whole game. I think if the entire game were like this one level, it would feel multitudes closer to being a Doom game, but instead 80% is dark, gray and black, and red corridors lit mostly by your flashlight which doesn't even light the center of the screen. I know it's a small thing, but I cannot begin to describe how much this bothered me. I appreciate the realism behind it, but it made me feel like I had a lazy eye trying to watch my crosshair and point this flashlight where I needed to see. And after a few hours of that, as well as some other shaky, flashy parts, I began to experience some actual eye pain despite never in my life having dealt with photosensitivity issues. But all of that said, as far as what I would consider fair criticisms of Doom 3, that's about it. And to be honest, I had a blast playing this. Oh god. It's Resident Evil. Holy shit. <laughs> what the hell? You can get the chainsaw? Oh, let's go, dude. It was cool to see a different interpretation of all the familiar guns, like the combat shotgun and the plasma rifle and the BFG, and as a huge fan of the demon design progression, I was excited to see the versions of them included here. Oh, yo, it's a revenant. God, their bodies look very translucent. Oh, is that a mancubus? That looks like a mancubus. That is disgusting. It is also worth mentioning that the boss fights themselves were also pretty cool. Some of them were just kind of bullet sponges with dynamic movesets, but most of them had some mechanic involved that was interesting enough to be engaging, but not demanding enough as to make it tedious. I really enjoyed them quite a bit. Overall, it's easier to go on about the negative things, and harder to relay all the positives while trying to avoid spoiling the experience should you want to play through it, but I hope I have been able to do the game justice while detailing all of my feelings about it. And especially considering this game can be bought for only a few dollars on sale, I am not upset at all with my decision to check it out. It is a fun little experience and a part of history for a franchise that is now growing more and more in popularity. Doom 3 presents some nifty ideas, and despite some grievances that are indeed much less infuriating than some you may find in games released now 20 years after it, I think it's a great example of a first-person shooter which, by struggling to find its own identity at the time of its release, has grown to adopt a new one entirely by way of how things have evolved after it.